Hello! In this video, I'll be answering 14 questions from Victoria Land 5. Let's get started right away. Each one of the rivals will develop feelings for Senpai for a different reason. For example, one of the rivals is faking her personality. The personality that she demonstrates around school is a complete act. One day, Senpai discovers the truth about her and learns what she is really like. At first, the girl is worried that Senpai is going to expose her lies, but instead, he just tells her that he likes her real personality better than her fake personality. This causes the girl to start thinking of Senpai as the only person in the world who she can be her true self around. She starts developing a crush on him, and by the end of the week, she wants to confess to him under the legendary cherry tree. None of the other girls will develop feelings for Senpai for that exact same reason. They will all have their own unique reason for getting a crush on him. However, I don't want to reveal those reasons now, because I don't want to spoil any of the plot twists that I have in mind. Ever since he was a young child, Taro has always been interested in the idea of becoming a professional author. He has written a few stories, but he's never had the confidence to show these stories to anyone. Even though he would love to write books for a living, he doesn't know if he'll be able to succeed as an author, so he's not sure what kind of job he should pursue after he graduates. He's hoping that, during his final months at Akademi, he'll figure out what he wants to do with his life. While Jokichi was a prisoner in Ryoba's basement, there wasn't much for him to do aside from talk to Ryoba. Eventually, he asked her to tell him more about herself, and that's when she told him about her family and the hereditary condition that everyone in her bloodline suffers from. After hearing about the Aishi condition, Jokichi knew that if he ever had a child with Ryoba, his child would suffer from the same affliction. After learning about the Aishi condition, Jokichi made an important decision, but I don't want to reveal it here in this video. I'd like you to learn about it within the game by unlocking cassette tapes that hold recordings of Jokichi and Ryoba's conversations. While Ayano is eliminating her rivals, Ryoba is not in Japan. She and Jokichi are in America, searching for someone important. So, there won't be many opportunities for Ryoba to interact with her daughter over the course of the game. Sometimes, I consider the idea that Ryoba might send Ayano postcards from America with advice on how to eliminate her rivals. However, I'm not 100% ready to promise that I'll include this feature in the final game. It's a maybe for now. The Aishi condition can be described as a lifelong sensation of feeling incomplete, like something is missing. Ryoba felt this way her entire life until she met Jokichi. In Ayano's case, the sensation of feeling incomplete is much more severe. She doesn't just feel like something is missing. She feels completely empty and hollow, like there is nothing inside of her. It's a much more extreme version of what her mother and her ancestors felt. This is why Ryoba has so much more personality than her daughter, and why Ayano seems much more emotionless than her mother. For many years, I've been thinking about how cool it would be if Yandere Simulator had a small town. However, it would require a massive amount of planning, a massive number of new assets, and a massive amount of time to implement everything that a small town would need. Even though I love the idea, it's not something I'm willing to promise unless Yandere Simulator gets a lot more 3D volunteers or has a tremendously successful crowdfunding campaign. There are around 90 students attending Akademi. But Akademi is such a huge school that even with 90 students, it's simply not possible 
for every location to always have a witness present. This means that there are many opportunities for the player to very easily kill their rival without being spotted. I frequently consider the idea of adding more students to the school so that it's easier for me to populate the places where the rivals will be spending most of their time. But adding more students to the game would require me to refactor many of the game's systems, which currently expect the number of students at school to be capped at a specific number. Changing that aspect of the game would involve a tremendous amount of time and work, so it might be a better idea to just use the 90 students I have as efficiently as possible. It's a hard decision to make, and I'm not ready to announce what I'm going to do about it. I never really think about adding guns to Yandere Simulator. It just doesn't feel very... Yandere. When I think of Yandere girls, I think of knives and swords. There are Yandere girls who have used guns, but I still feel like blades are the signature weapons of Yandere girls, which is why I'm not interested in adding any projectile weapons to Yandere Simulator. Well, it depends. Every bug is different. Sometimes when I read a bug report, I instantly know exactly what is causing the problem, and I can fix it within minutes. Other times, it can be extremely difficult to understand why a bug is happening, and on rare occasions, it might take almost an hour to understand and fix the problem. However, most bugs are fixed much faster than that. Every now and then, just for fun, I sometimes imagine what a multiplayer mode for Yandere Simulator might be like. I'll explain what I have in mind. Every player is a Yandere girl whose objective is to kill one of the other players. There are only two people that you are allowed to kill, your target and the player who is targeting you. Now here's the twist. You know what your target looks like, but you don't know which of the other players is the one targeting you. Also, every player and every student in school would have a randomized appearance so that you can't tell who is a player and who is a student. This means that you could hide in plain sight by pretending to be an NPC and waiting for the perfect moment to strike your unsuspecting target. In short, the winner would be the player who does the best job of pretending to be an NPC and is smart enough to figure out which of the other students at school are actually other players. Even though I think this idea would be really fun to work on, I don't know anything about the process of making multiple computers connect to each other and play a game together, so any type of online multiplayer is simply never going to happen unless an experienced programmer wants to help me out with it. Unfortunately, Yandere Simulator is banned from the most popular video game streaming website, Twitch TV. It's banned because of the nudity that was in the old Titan Mode Easter Egg. This is a very silly and invalid reason for the game to be banned, because there were no visible nipples or genitals, just like the Titans from Attack on Titan, which is a game that is not banned from Twitch TV. Anyway, I asked Twitch to unban Yandere Simulator, and they said that they wouldn't consider unbanning the game until I was done adding new content. At this point in time, I feel that Yandere Simulator has around 90% of the content it's going to have at release, and the only remaining content that will be added in the future won't violate Twitch's community guidelines. So, sometime in the near future, I would like to contact Twitch and ask them again to consider unbanning Yandere Simulator. I'll probably start trying to contact Twitch about this sometime in early 2023. My favorite Easter egg is Bad Time Mode. It's the Easter egg I always use whenever I need to quickly eliminate a character in order to test the end of day sequence or the police investigation sequence. 
No, not really. As I've said before, I consider Yandere Simulator to be about 90% finished. The only things I need at this point in time are animations and voice acting for the remaining rivals. Once I have that, I'll have everything I need to complete the main story mode, and then the game will be finished. Why would I abandon it now? That would be like quitting a race right before the finish line. Years ago, I wanted to create footage for a YouTube video depicting me working on Yandere Simulator. I didn't have access to 2D artists or 3D modelers at that point in time, so the fastest way for me to portray a male character doing anything was to simply recolor Senpai's character model to reflect the way I usually dress, in a simple shirt and jeans. Later, when an artist offered to make avatar illustrations for me, I asked them to use the senpai in white shirt design. Not because I liked that design, or because I thought it was a good representation of me, but just because it was how I had appeared on the channel in the past. After that, it kinda became my official look, so I just kept using it. If I had actually designed an avatar for myself, it would definitely have looked a lot different from Senpai. Maybe one of these days I'll eventually start using a new avatar. But it's too early to know for sure. And with that, I've answered all of the questions that I received from Victoria Land 5. I enjoy answering these types of questions, and I also enjoy putting together these little videos. It's very fun, and it doesn't take much time so it's the perfect way to take a short break from game development while still engaging with the community. But, with that said, it's time for me to get back to work. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator.